I'm Sid, and these are my best friends. My mom, Kim, my dad, Ty, and my sister, Maddie, who before starting her own adventure, joined us in rocking out a state-of-the-art refit on our floating home. Now, we're ready to set sail to die with memories, not dreams, and live dauntless. Hey guys, welcome back. We're just leaving the hotel where we're staying at while the boat is on the hard. If you haven't seen last week's video where we discover our corroded sail drives, make sure you jump back and watch that. I'll link it in the cards above as well as the description box below. Now, let's go take a closer look at these sail drives. You can put a little piece of two by four or lumber or whatever between the blade and the bottom of the boat, but well, I had a four foot two by four, so I'm all right. Or an eight foot two by four. It's a four by four, I don't want to be picky. Shut up. <laughs> this cone's in a little better shape than the other one. That same zinc seems to be in better shape than the other one. Yeah, but the sail drive is in worse shape. I know, which is interesting. The sail drive is chewed up more, and the zinc is not. I don't know, maybe the zinc is completely corroded, and I just can't tell. Oh, no, it's completely cooked. See? Oh, my God. I take back my previous statement. Yeah. Ready? See how it's hollow on the inside? It just eats the metal all the way through and makes it porous. Which is why you can't just weld the side of this um, sail drive and just build it up with weld. I mean, I suppose you probably could. And then grind it and smooth it out and hide it. That's not the right thing to do. Problem is, is it makes the metal porous. So um, it weakens the strength of the, of the actual alloy. That's a bummer. Uh, let's look at new zincs width of my thumb, nice solid aluminum interior, and here we have that, it even ate it up right through the holes. <laughs> In case anybody wants to know what a zinc looks like on the inside, looks Just like that. <sighs> Carry on. So the seals are in good shape. There's no oil residue inside where the shafts are at on either side. So the oil that we've got leaking out is coming through these holes. It's just oozing through the holes. It's oozing through the metal because the yeah the, the the holes have been eaten through on the sail drive to the point where it's down just this micro thin layer. So I'm trying not to stab at it to make it leak out, but we kept seeing these little tiny single droplets that would come up like the size of I mean, like, like a coffee cup base and it would pop up at the surface every now and then and it was oil leaking out of the sail drive now that sail drive did not leak and when i drained the oil on that sail drive on port it was actually clean oil and it looked like it was in really good shape i'm going to be really curious to see what this oil looks like when i drained it out because i believe uh it might be a little milky from salt water because if oil's leaking out i'm imagining water's getting in Like it's clay, the texture of it. Oh yeah! Oh my God, that's where the oil came from. Um, I got sh shit. Can you give me that bucket over there? Oops, I just got oil all over Kim. 
<laughs> and the camera. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, okay. Ready? No. Yeah. Stop doing that. Look at that, it's just oozing. Oh, it ate a hole right through God. the side. Well, this is why we're holed out. This is why we're doing this. Can you zoom in? Look at that. Bloop bloop. Bloop bloop. Alright. So I'm gonna take wrench and this is a big flat head right here but you can take the flat head and or this paint five and one and use it like a big screwdriver I get all the garbage cleared out maybe you should have done that first instead of poking holes in the sail drive well I didn't know I was gonna poke a hole in the sail drive oh my God. yeah and it's definitely milky yep that means salt water is getting in there. You are making a mess. So the prop, you can tell, is actually in really, really good shape. And the reason is, is the center of this prop in there, you see that right there, this ring that you see in the center is actually a rubber bushing. So there's actually no metal point of contact in that. Everything binds on that center bushing and that's what uh, allows if the prop gets stuck, um, or gets bound on something, the actual prop shaft can spin and it doesn't um, bind up the transmission. So the reason why the prop isn't eaten up but everything else is, well, it's because there's no electric connectivity anywhere to the actual prop. So it just goes to show you, if you're not plugged in and its system's not grounded, it's not grounded to the water, no current can run through it, ergo, no damage, so. And there you go. Give it a wipe real quick. I'll see if I can get oil out. I think I got most of it drained out. All right, so anybody that wants to know how this works, this is the drive leg, obviously. This shaft turns here, and you can see it rotates down. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. So this sail drive, uh, some of you have asked us in previous uh, videos about does it matter which direction it goes. It really doesn't. You can mount the engine sideways and turn the sail drive 90 degrees. You can make it run forwards and reverse, counter rotate your props. You can do any of that stuff. But this sleeve right here and this coupler, the sleeve slides up inside of here and slides over this drive shaft. Up inside of there is the actual transmission that determines which the, the gear ratio and which direction that this actually turns. So this gasket that's right here and all of this space around these bolts that you see right here attaches to here. And this hole right here is where water comes in. I'll wait for that to pass. This is where water comes in. It gets drawn up through here. And then as you can see, you can show everybody that, there's a hole right here that's supposed to be there, unlike the hole that's not. <laughs> that hole draws water in up through this part of the leg. So the outsides of the legs actually are drawing water in. That runs in throughout this space around here, up through the outside of the sail drive, gets sucked in through a, a hose that runs all the way around to the engine where there's a pump, and that's the impeller that everyone's talking about. It's a rubber impeller with a bunch of veins, and that sucks water through 
the sail drive, then pushes it through the engine and then spits it out the exhaust. So. Out the exhaust. That's right. Today on How Things Work. Hooray. Yes. So, anyhow. The, or in this case, how they're supposed how to they're work. How they're supposed to. <laughs> and in essence, the water actually does cool the sail drive down a little bit as well. Because um, those gears turning in there, of course, do generate heat. So, there you go. So we've taken the both legs off. Now all we have to do is make our skids for the uh, engines to come out. And we can pull those out later. While we wait for our new sail drives to arrive, the yard gets started on the bottom job and we start in on other projects. Ty. Yeah. Are you doing a shitty job? Yes. <laughs> what shitty job are you doing? I'm replacing the waste hoses. Um, and last time I replaced them, of course, they used two inch hose in for Lagoon, or Lagoon uses two inch hose in Europe, but you can't buy two inch hose here. So I had to buy these special adapters and get them shipped from overseas. The cool part is though, is now there's inch and a half line, which is available everywhere. And when I bought the adapters, I bought quick release uh, threaded adapters. So to take a waste hose out of this boat takes about 10 seconds, which is awesome. So I've taken one hose out, put it on the back deck. Now I just need to get the uh, valve out because um, I think that the through holes are seeping just a bit um, from when they bedded them from the factory. And I saw that about, I don't know, six, eight months ago, and then it stopped seeping. But I already ordered the new through holes, and I figured, well, now that we're out of the water, it seems like the right thing to do is just to, well, replace the through holes. So I am just sweating my ass off while I'm leaning over with my nose <laughs> in a through hole that smells like yesterday's Boop. lunch and um, trying to get it unthreaded and cut off so that I can knock it out and we can prep and reseat uh, new through holes. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. And it's at a funky angle like everything in a boat and it smells and it's gross. And I think I'm gonna have to then take that uh, seacock over to the utility room and put it in the bench vise to be able to get that plastic fitting out of it. So it's, it's a five minute boat job. So it should take five minutes, but it's gonna take probably till lunch to get this part done. Mm, so. Lunch. Mm. All right, why don't you show the people down in there that you're there. All right, so these hoses right here, this is the through holes, obviously. And then this is the quick release that I put on. So now there is inch and a half adapter fittings for the two inch hose that allows me to then take this hose and, uh, ew, it's like some yum yums drained out of there. It didn't all drain out when we flushed it. So I'm gonna cut these through hole nuts down here to get these fittings off because um, they're not unthreading because I think they seek a, this seacock to that through hole. So I'm gonna have to cut it apart and uh, redo it. Yeah, I'm gonna sand it all back after I get the silicone off or the Sika. And then once it's sanded down to the gel, then I'm gonna hit it with barrier coat. And then once everything is barrier coated with a nice epoxy barrier, then I'm gonna reset the through holes through um, and get those cleaned up so when they come and do bottom paint, um, it's sealed. I just don't want any water seeking, seeping behind and getting into the gel and causing any osmotic blistering or anything like that in there. So we just want to make sure that we seal off the gel coat uh, 
really well. So that's pretty much it. <gasps> that one is actually turning. Shut the front door. I couldn't do this from down the through hole, down in the hole though. You're not enough room. <clears throat> I'm gonna put the Sika on the through hole from the outside and uh, and get it all doped up and I'm gonna slide it in from the outside and I need you to thread it in and we just want to thread it so just just so that it's snug and tight we still want a little bed of Sika um, and then we'll let that sit overnight and then tomorrow we'll come in and we'll give it a good turn okay do we not put any Sika on this side no it'll squeeze through on the inside around the the threads and all that fun mm. stuff because uh, the, the holes are over drilled <clears throat> okay I, I understand. All right, you stay down here. I'm gonna go outside and you'll see those through holes coming through here in a minute. And you gotta sit in front of the fan. Okay. Yeah. Ready? Ready. This piece of equipment we're using to pull the engines out is called a boom lift, and we've got some experience using it back when we were in Georgia working on the Leopard 50. This is, however, a new piece of equipment for Shearwater, and although they're doing a great job pulling it out, they're still working on their terminology. Down or up? Down. And boom left. So I don't know if you can have him uh, lift his right wheels. Oh, tip. tip. Which way? Tip. Which way? That way? Yeah. Tip. 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 No, tip. Tip yourself. What? Use your tippy face, tip yourself. To look to his left. Forward. There you go, just like that. Perfect, go, right? So what we're gonna do now that they're out, out he's gonna drop the boom and get the, get the forks and scoop them up and put them side by side up underneath the boat because it's gonna rain like hell this weekend um, and we'll be able to get underneath, clean them up, do services, prep for an oil change, all that fun stuff. So I gotta move my stuff out of the way so he can do his stuff. Okay, what happened? What are you doing? Well, the drain that goes from the engine room into the main bilge uh, is clogged and 
there's no, I put oil mats and everything down just to make sure there's no oil or fuel or anything like that, which there isn't. But I need to drain the water out of the bottom of the bilge. Um, and we're just gonna drain it into the dirt because, well, it's just rainwater. But I need Sydney to go down and suck on the hose to start the vacuum. Um, so. <laughs> All right, holler when you're ready. Okay. <laughs> you're so mean. I know. He's even stomping a little bit. <laughs> Start sucking, sister. Well, it's a brand new petroleum based hose. You did not whistle, buddy. She dropped it a long time ago. Lift it up so I can see it. She did a good job. Okay, put it down. Good job. It tastes bad. It's because it's a brand new hose. And it. Fail drives are pretty rare these days, and to save a little bit of money, we ordered them from two different places. One, the brand new one, we ordered from a local Yanmar dealer here in South Florida. The other, I was lucky enough to find on eBay. Never used, still in the box, although a little damaged, and cheaper than having to buy a new one from a retail distributor. Hey guys, thanks for watching this week's video. If you made it all the way to the end, leave us a sailboat emoji down in the comment section below. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up while you're there. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and smash that notification bell so you're notified every time we post a new video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.